You're looking at a jet fighter trying to dock with a moving bomber in midair. And this wasn't just a one-off idea. From kamikaze rockets to tiny jets stuffed in bomb bays, these were real military experiments. They actually thought this would work. And sometimes it did. I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Air Park. Let's dive in. The Soviet Zivano Project. Bombers carrying fighters carrying bombs. Let's start with the Soviets, because of course we are. In the 1930s, the USSR said, you know what this bomber needs? More planes. So they mounted Polykarpov I-16 fighters, fully armed, onto the wings of a Tupolev TB-3 bomber. It wasn't a stunt. They actually used this setup in combat during World War II. In 1941, Zivano SPB formations struck oil deposits and bridges in Romania. These fighters couldn't carry that much ordnance on their own, but launched mid-air from the mothership. They became dive bombers with serious teeth. It's like a Russian nesting doll with bombs. Yokoska MX-7 Oka, the human guided rocket. Next up, the Oka. Translated, it means cherry blossom. And just like the flower, this weapon was built to be beautiful, brief, and gone. The Yokosuka MX-7 Model 11 Oka wasn't so much a plane as it was a manned rocket. Carried under a bomber, it was released near enemy ships where the pilot would ignite the rocket engines and dive towards the target at insane speeds. No landing gear, no return trip, just raw velocity and the pilot's final mission. In Japanese culture, the cherry blossom represents life's fragility and fleeting nature, something deeply tied to the kamikaze ethos. The name was symbolic, beauty, sacrifice, and an understanding that the blossom doesn't last. American pilots, baffled and horrified by the concept, nicknamed it the Baka Bomb. Baka meaning fool or idiot in Japanese. It was part mockery, part fear. They couldn't believe Japan was seriously strapping humans into guided missiles, but they were. And now, a full-scale wooden replica built by a retired art teacher named George Lucas is on display at the National Warplane Museum in Geneseo, New York. It's a sobering tribute to a desperate, tragic tactic. Heinkel, HE-162, Germany's last-ditch jet. Now, let's talk about the Heinkel HE-162, a.k.a. Volksjäger, or People's Fighter. Near the end of the war, Germany was out of time, out of metal, and nearly out of pilots. So they built a jet fighter out of wood. Seriously, wood. The engine was mounted on top of the fuselage like a hairdryer glued to a surfboard, which looked ridiculous and was dangerous, especially if you had to eject, because the only way out was through the blast zone. Hence, it became the first operational single-engine jet to include an ejection seat. It was fast, but also rushed. Some literally fell apart in flight. The plan? Give those to barely trained teenage pilots from the Hitler Youth and throw them into combat. Of nearly a thousand built, only about 120 made it to airfields. Most never flew. Grounded by parts shortages, fuel shortages, and a rapidly collapsing Third Reich. One of those surviving reminders isn't a real one, but it's close. A full-scale replica, also built by George Lucas and donated to the same museum, now sits beside the Oka in Geneseo, built in Nunda, New York, by hand, from wood. A fitting material, really. McDonnell, 
XF-85 Goblin, the fighter in a bomb bay. Ah, uh, the XF-85 Goblin, arguably the most adorable death trap in aviation history. This tiny, egg-shaped jet was designed to be carried inside the bomb bay of a B-36 bomber. The idea? Launch it when enemy fighters showed up, then hook it back into the mothership once the threat was gone. On paper, it was genius. In the air, not so much. Test flights in 1948 showed how hard it was to reconnect with a bomber in turbulence. The goblin bounced, swung, missed, and nearly killed its test pilot more than once. Eventually, the Air Force shelved it. They kept the name, though, because if anything says goblin, it's this weird little jet. RF-84K Thunderflash Docking for Reconnaissance Last up, the RF-84K Thunderflash, a sleek recon jet with a nose hook, part of the FICON project. It was meant to dock with a B-36 bomber midair. The mission? Ride the bomber to the edge of enemy territory, drop out, take the photos, and, if conditions were perfect, redock under the bomber for the flight home. It worked, technically, but it was complicated, risky, and quickly made obsolete by midair refueling and satellites. The program flew into history, a short-lived footnote to the Cold War innovation. These aircraft might seem absurd now, but they were born from urgency, scarcity, and ambition. If a bomber didn't have the range or speed, maybe you dock a fighter to it. If you couldn't stop an enemy ship, maybe you build a human-guided missile. Sometimes, desperation makes people creative, and sometimes, they actually thought this would work. I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Air Park. Thanks for watching, and remember, even the strangest ideas have a story worth telling.